Welcome back, everybody, to the Houston Texans Madden 21 Franchise Rebuild, episode 45 today, and it's a big episode. Today, it's all about the running back position. This is going to be fun. We have seen Manny Grubbs, we have seen James Golden, but we have not yet seen, at least playing for us, I think we've played against him a couple times, but we have not seen Robert Penn play this year, and we are still a really solid team right now. We really are, and we still have a chance to get so much better. This running game is one of the weakest parts of the team at the moment. That could be very temporary, as Robert Penn could give this offense the boost we've been waiting for. But still, we have not needed a strong running game to become 5-2 and, and to be competing here for the AFC South title. So, welcome back, everybody. We've won five straight. This is the best I've felt about the team the entire series. We have not played this well in the first 40 episodes or so. But now this year, week one was weird. Everything since has been really solid. So, we'll sim a couple games today and then get to Robert Payne's debut. I don't think I'd bring him back early in week 10 if they allow it. There have been very few times I've actually brought a player back early from injury, and I don't see it happening on this time. So, we start out here against the Baltimore Ravens to kick things off. I wanted to go through a little bit of the scouting with you as I've dumped more points into the top prospects. And yes, at wide receiver, we have five more first round options. Now, it seems like in real life, every year seems to have a great receiver class. And then you get, you know, players like Justin Jefferson, who was like the fifth receiver taken, going for 1,400 yards. Receiver is super deep in our league and in this draft one more time. So that is just going to be a trend that continues. I wish there was more variance because it feels like every class at minimum is strong at receiver, weak at offensive line, and has a plethora of edge rush talent. So I'd like to see things be switched up a lot more a lot more randomness to these classes you know in these series I've done oftentimes I am focused on the offense because that is typically the more entertaining side of the football to watch they're the ones that typically are scoring all the points for you and that's just kind of the way the game of football is played but this year I've been trying to really describe watching the defense play and I think that the best way to put it is it's like watching an offense. It's not just that we're a good defense. Not every good defense is like fun to watch. It's our style of play. The fact that we can get all these sacks and turnovers. I think that style is very entertaining to watch. Knowing that at any moment there could be a big play. I think like the Vikings defense in real life isn't like the most entertaining because they literally build their entire defense around getting you to third down and then you failing to convert. It's more effective than it is entertaining. But I'm enjoying our brand of football right now where the defense is probably a lot more fun to watch than the offense. I'm hoping that gets, you know, caught up with the offense getting stronger here today. That's a real good upgrade here for Daryl Lehman. Just a little bit of everything. There is a little bit of variance here to the upgrading. Sometimes you get lucky. That was a really good one. Oh, and back to what I was saying. No, the Vikings defense certainly was not fun to watch this past year. Outside of about seven games of Cameron Dantzler at the end of the season. But um, historically with Mike Zimmer, they have not been like a super turnover heavy team. They'll get sacks because Daniil Hunter is one of the best rushers in the NFL. But overall, they're just trying to get you to punt the football. All right, what to do here with Jordan Love? I guess field general. We have seen a lot of errant passes this year. That has to get a little bit better, and that should help. Short accuracy, I consider that to be set and done when it's at a 90 or so. I wish there was, like, an easier way to, like, test out stuff like that. Like, imagine you could get into, like, a practice, and it would, like, track stats. That's one thing I think they should do. Just give us practice, but track stats at the same time. So if I go in there and I throw 100 passes, I want to know the accuracy. And I would spend even more time doing that and not playing the actual games. 
Oh no, the win streak is over. This is a bad loss here for Houston. Baltimore's a good team. They thoroughly destroyed us here. We did not really best them in any category. Time of possession, not too good. I like our defense. You would get to see them for 43 minutes in this game. They didn't play that well. Two touchdowns for Lamar Jackson. None for Jordan Love. This is kind of a lackluster stat line. Naheem Hines, 87 yards. Manny Grubbs had 47. Two touchdowns for Trayvon Moore. Two carries, three yards. That is efficiency right there. Nothing too interesting here in the receiving game. Although, I wonder if Marquise Brown got a chance to cover Marquise Brown. Hugh Lincoln picked up a sack. And then a few tackles for loss. But otherwise, pretty bad game, but our first in a while. Hopefully we bounce back here and don't start a losing streak. We'll get to that one in a moment here. We have a lot of upgrading. Jabari Carr. I have really liked watching him play this year. I feel like his play has taken a big step forward. Awareness goes up here. And that's the one rating I just want to see get better. It's now at an 80. And Jabari is ranked the ninth defensive tackle here in our league. So three and a half sacks which is around what he typically does in a season, a full year. Looks like the tackles might even be a little bit down, but I'm seeing more impact in the pass game, which is more important to me and his role on defense. Alan Beverly at 82 overall. Really interested if this rookie of the year race does come down to him and Hillhouse. Once I'm able to start checking VADs every week, I'll have to see if they are 1 and 2 like I think they could be. And then Josh Richards. Coming off the bench. 81 overall. Maybe today I'll have a chance to do a little bit of what I talked about last episode. Kicking Beverly inside. Having him rush as a tackle. And then Richards can play. And I think we might have our best, uh, one of our best pass rush packages there. Although, with the way Hillhouse is playing, maybe not. He's been outstanding. Still gotta see what we have in Richards. I think one big question is, what is Manny Grubb's role when Robert Penn starts to play? Because I don't think Grubbs has been bad this year, but he also hasn't been all that productive in the simulating. His average is the exact same as last year. We still haven't seen a run longer than 21 yards. We'll have to see if Penn does raise the level of play. The Texans have another losing streak. It's our first close loss of the season. Every other loss was by multiple scores. But we lose by four to Cleveland. Logan Stewart, two touchdowns. Same for Jordan Love. They pretty much had the exact same stat lines here, except for Stewart had better yards per attempt. Manny Grubbs, 57 yards. Run defense was a little bit better, and that's been one of our weaknesses this season. Norwood over 100 yards with a score. Amari Jones had a good day. Russ Watson, two catches. But now a 5-4 record. A pick, by the way, for Joe Jackson. But at 5-4, that's going to have us in a three-way tie for first place. Everybody is still in it. And we don't play a division game until week 15. So we still have some other games to get through here. We close with the Titans here. And this is our last division game. So we still play three out-of-conference opponents. Which could be very critical for tiebreakers. If we have like a three-team tie or something, then common games may come into play and we're all playing these NFC East teams. So we're looking to bounce back now. And that's going to bring Robert Penn into action. How do I take him off injured reserve right now? Why isn't it letting me return him from the IR? I know I waited until week one. If I had put him on IR in preseason, he wouldn't be eligible to return, but he is now. It's been well over eight weeks. Why can't I bring him back? 
I'm even checking the footage right now from that episode, and I did sim to week one before I placed him on injured reserve. I know in the past I've tried to do this, and I, I art a player in preseason, which you cannot return from, so I don't know what the problem is. I decided to sim one more game to see if we could fix it in the next week, so we will have a win here against the Dallas Cowboys. Defense didn't have a great game here, but we won a high-scoring game. Get back in the win column. Both quarterbacks have good games here. Both pretty efficient. Dak had 356, 11 yards in attempts, so a lot of big plays from this offense. Grubbs gets to play an extra game and is more efficient, 4.3 yards per carry. And receiving Casey Bushrod, a huge performance, 151 and two scores. We had George Ingram find the end zone. Dante Hairston, the rookie, did as well. And then a couple sacks here. Ferris, Hillhouse, Jabari Carr. Down below, it's telling us that Robert Penn is back. Let's see if he can return now. Maybe there's a bug where it's like we have to have an extra week. I don't know why that's the case. It said he was uninjured. Remove from IR. Robert Penn set to make his debut now against the Philadelphia Eagles. Sorry, Cowboys fans. We skipped over that one. Two-way tie now atop the division with Jacksonville. Everybody's still in it. But now a big matchup against the Eagles. And I can't wait to see what we can do with Robert Penn. In his career, Robert Penn has been a decent running back. He's only been over four yards a carry once. These averages really aren't phenomenal, but in Madden, they're a little bit better than they are in real life. I think you have to adjust everything by like .2 or .3 for just the way rushing in Madden is. He does catch the football. He's productive there. And I'm excited to see if he can bring us some big play element and just boost the play of the offense overall. So that's the focus of this episode as we take on Philadelphia. Let's see what they have for a challenge. They no longer have Jalen Hurts, I know that much, but they have Miles Sanders, Keenan Allen, Laramie Tunsil. Otherwise, this team is like completely different from the start of the series, which is what I wanna see. You don't have the same players for eight straight years. Matt Taylor is the quarterback. Fifth year, 77 overall, 86 deep accuracy, 87 shorts. All right, and this season, he's posted 19 touchdowns, five picks in his first year of starting. They elected not to take Nate Wheeler number one because they got Matt Taylor in free agency. D'Angelo Fowler, Keenan Allen, Glenn, Bonito, a lot of good receivers here. Pretty good hands, good route running for Fowler and Allen, good downfield route running for Bonito. So this should be a fun matchup to get into. I think we're going to have a lot of fun seeing Robert Penn make his Texans debut, a long-awaited debut against the 2-8 team. A little bit of upgrading beforehand. Pass coverage for Kurt Reiner. His run stopping seems just fine, but we could cover tight ends better. Amari Jones. I say route runner. See what happens here. Medium's the good one. It just got two points better. So 93 here with a morale boost. Could probably still go into deep threat. Robert Penn joins the offense as we take on the Philadelphia Eagles here. And we're looking to get win number seven on the season. We want to go better than 500. At this point, I think 10 wins is the goal. That would be a seven win leap from last season. Oh, we always start with the football. We don't today. The wait continues for Robert Penn. Philadelphia. Gave Matt Taylor Carson Wentz number 11, and that is an easy pitch and catch across the 50. Gotta catch Ingram, and Justin Reed does. But all the way at the 23, that's 52 yards right away. That's like more yards than he's had in his entire career with the Giants. 
From the 23-yard line, it's a fake, and Taylor is going to be wrapped up for a sack by Stephon Ferris. Loss of a couple. Defense has not played their best today in the simulating. We'll see if they have a rebound effort here. As Taylor's back to pass once again, and he's going down once again. Cordell Hillhouse making his Rookie of the Year case. Philadelphia on a third and 21. This one's lobbed downfield, and it's knocked away at the last moment by Isaiah Fletcher. So, really fast start. Whoa, 45-42 down below. 87 combined points. You know, I might want to re-watch that one Kansas City Rams game from a couple years ago. I think about that game every now and then. Well, everybody, we've been waiting for it, counting down the days. And now our bottom 10 rushing offense welcomes Robert Penn, who blocks on his first snap, and then the pass is caught by rookie George Ingram. Hopefully we run the football. I have not yet messed with the playbook stuff, but I may have to. We'll see. Jordan Love completes the pass to Amari Jones, and that is a first down. Three receivers on the field here at the 37-yard line. It's a handoff to Robert Penn. He breaks initial contact and second contact across the 50. The wait was worth it. Touchdown. 63 yards. He was hungry. That's what I'm talking about right there. One play. It looks like he's stuffed for a no gain. And he was determined to make something happen the first time he touched the football. You can't write a better story. Unbelievable start for Robert Penn. Biggest play of the season by a running back on this team. Maybe biggest play of the series by a running back. Texans lead. One more time. We've been waiting for this. Robert Penn, one broken tackle here, two, three, four missed tackles on the play, and then a lack of effort over here on the right side. Robert Penn, what will he do next? That's what I'm talking about right there, everybody. 7-3 Houston. Matt Taylor's going to start in the air. They have yet to run the football, but Miles Sanders will have his first touch. And he is across the 40 with a gain of 17. Throwing once again. Here comes Ferris. And that ball is out. And the tackle is made at the 30. That's the second sack for Stefan Ferris. Philadelphia has already allowed three today. Eight sacks on the year for Stefan Ferris. The year three breakout. Second down and 21, Matt Taylor completes the pass. You know, in real life, you hear about certain positions you got to wait a certain amount of time to really see what you have in a player. I think you have to apply the same principle to Madden as the deep ball is tipped in somehow incomplete. That was close. But like rookie tight ends in real life tend to not do anything. They just block. And other positions you see production from quicker. And as, you know, trends change, expectations change as well. Like now, everybody has expectations of rookie receivers because we've seen so many rookie receivers do well. Before Justin Jefferson, there was A.J. Brown. A few years before that, you're talking about Odell Beckham. And there are a lot of players in between that have done a pretty good job as well. And others last year that just didn't have 1,400 yards. But maybe here in Madden, it's like year three is key for a pass rusher. Year four and five, key at running back because you're just at such a disadvantage at like anything below 85 overall that it takes a while to see what a running back can really do. Jordan Love almost had this one intercepted. He wanted Jones. Robert Penn started this drive with a gain of one. 
So not quite as good as his first carry. Third and nine now for Jordan Love. Wide open. Gordon Norwood across the 45. First down. Titans lost. They fall further and further out of the division title race. As Jordan Love's got to throw this one quick. The pressure was allowed there by Robert Bullard. Who continues to be very inconsistent at right tackle. Two tight ends on second and ten. We'll throw it once more. Jordan Love got hit, and that impacted the throw. Probably going to be increasing the running frequency, especially with Penn playing now. Third down and ten for Jordan Love, and he's going to go deep with it. Down the left sideline. It's caught! Candidate brings it down at the seven. He made sure his feet stayed in bounds. And he made the 48-yard catch. That was phenomenal. Second best play of the day for the offense. But now it's goal to go. Here's Robert Penn up the middle. He's hit down. Another one on the ground here. It's Penn. He gets stuffed. So he's been met at the point of attack. Basically all four carries to this point. Third down and goal now, trying to extend this lead. Jordan Love throws to Jones, and that gets knocked down. Pretty good coverage there. Rodrigo Blankenship on. And here is a field goal putting us up seven. Not a bad start here for Houston. Philadelphia goes three and out. They give it right back to the offense. And Robert Penn drops the first pass thrown his way, but not the second one. He gets 17 yards. Amari Jones getting the football a lot more now. I think the route running upgrades probably have something to do with that. Norwood gets 28. It's interesting, though, how playing the same role as he was a year ago, I mean, we saw a candidate be the number one. Jones really didn't do much. And now... He is the focal point of the passing game as he catches a touchdown. 17-3. Build up a lead here. Get Robert Penn going to protect it. That's how we get away from being a bottom 10 rushing team. Again, Philadelphia forced to kick it. We start inside our own 10. This is not going in the right direction at all. And we're going to punt it from the end line, basically. Philadelphia with a chance now. Hillhouse with a penalty. Third and two. They get five. 14 yards. Then Sanders. Jabari Carsacks, Taylor. And then a deflection. Forcing the field goal. Let's sim one more of these. Jordan Love picking up the first down. Then Penn gets three. He picks up eight. Ingram for 15. And at the Philadelphia 37, in comes James Golden for 25 yards. Candidate for 6 yards. And on third down, Candidate scores the touchdown as we build up an 18-point advantage. Well, Philadelphia is moving the football to at least get something before halftime. But it looks like they'll have to settle again. Oh, and they missed it. 24-6. Great start for the Houston Texans. At the 25-yard line, we start on the ground here. Robert Penn picks up a couple. Now we'll throw it on a second and nine. That one is caught by Norwood. And it is right at the sticks. Russ Watson, the fullback, is in the game. On third and one. Oh, no! Penn stopped in the backfield. We just can't give him any space. Philadelphia only with two victories coming into this game. Not looking good. That is complete close to a first down. It's a gain of nine. Taylor started the day with a nice pass to Evan Ingram. And since then, Philadelphia hasn't done much. Second down in inches. Fake to Sanders. Taylor fires downfield and has a man open. That is a first down and a gain of 25. 
Taylor setting up the screen for Miles Sanders, and there's going to be a roughing the passer call. So they'll have it at around the 34-yard line. Sending five now. Taylor completes it right in front of Isaiah Fletcher. Eagles haven't ran the football much, but they will. Here it's Miles Sanders. Lost his footing and dives ahead to the 20. Getting Sanders going on the outside. He takes it inside the 10 and he's got the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Sealed the edge pretty well against us. I was surprised at how easy that was. Well, let's take a look here. Yeah. We have man coverage set up, no corner on this side, so it's kind of up to Justin Reed. And he takes his first move there to the high safety spot, so not a very good setup here. Put him in a tough spot to make any kind of a play. Also, they ran an RPO there, so his first step was going to be playing that deep zone regardless. And that took away anybody who could make a play there. So, really good call for Philadelphia. 11 point game now. We can't just coast. Not until we score a couple more times. Candidate is taken down. Outside of Penn's long run to start, there has not been much. Reminds me of 2013 week one. Jordan Love completes. This is caught by Robert Penn. 2013 Week 1, Adrian Peterson after winning the MVP. First play from scrimmage against the Lions was like a 60-something yard touchdown. And he ended up with under 100 yards on the day and the Vikings lost that game. So hopefully we get Penn to 100 yards and hopefully we don't lose. Jordan Love wants to set up the screen. Here goes Robert Penn. He makes a move and gets the first down at midfield. Oh, look, it's Bill O'Brien. We face him again. This is fantastic. Look what we've done with the roster since firing you. Robert Penn on the carry. 99 yards. One more, please. Jumping in here in the editing, I can't believe I never pointed out how we got to debut a free agent running back pickup against Bill O'Brien. Robert Penn got one. That's 100. Although I'm worried he could lose it. When's the last time we had a 100-yard rusher? I really do not know the answer. Jordan Love on third and six. Has a man open and he couldn't bring it in. George Ingram dropped it. Yes, that's why you trade for a good punter. We had to make our punt game better. We trade for a punter, and now we're in the playoff race. 11 points up. Philadelphia at the 1. Call something aggressive here, please. Fullback dive. And it worked pretty well, too. Gain of 6. Four-man rush now, and Taylor's taken down! It's Allen Beverly at the one. We'll have one more shot at the safety. They might play it safe here. I've seen that so much in recent games. Third down and ten. Full back dive. Oh, no! What are you doing? Gained 12 yards? No! Bill O'Brien, he called a good one there. We need Kurt Reiner to make the play here. But they get into the second level. Jackson's taken out of the play. First and 10, Philadelphia. Taylor's got some time and he's intercepted. Pick six, Marquise Brown. One more time. Easy. We've seen him intercept the ball a lot on the channel this week. I like it.
Undercutting the out route. Classic. That makes me feel a little more comfortable having a three-score lead here in the second half. 31-13, Stephon Ferris. Nine sacks on the season. And the ball going back to the Houston offense. You know I want to see a little bit more of Robert Penn. Can we please start giving him a little bit of space? The blocking's been terrible today. Hand off Robert Penn. Nowhere to go. Well, I think this is definitely going to be a good chance for us to say, okay, definitively the offensive line is good, bad, average at run blocking. If they can't get things opened up a bit for Robert Penn, that's going to show that we probably still have to make a personnel change or two there. I know what I'm watching out for when I edit this back. Dumped off, loss of a couple there. See, when I'm editing here, it's not just editing to get the video done. It's a little bit of watching the tape, getting a second look at some things. Second down and 12 now for Matt Taylor. He slides out of the pocket and completes the mile. Sanders, and he takes off up the middle. Sanders to midfield. They set up the screen now. There is Kurt Reiner. Started the season really well. Haven't seen as much of him in recent episodes. He only has two tackles today. Well, they haven't ran the football much. Taylor once again looks to throw it, and he gets rid of this one. Third down and 13. Taylor takes a shot down the sideline and overthrows his receiver. Two defenders in the area. Philly's got to go for it. They have to get to our 39. We send five. Taylor takes another shot. And it's caught by Keenan Allen over the top of Isaiah Fletcher. 46 yards. It's good to see Fletcher get a matchup like this too. See him up against a true number one. First down and goal for Taylor. This time complete to Ingram. Now Bonito is hurt on the play. From the three, there's a stop in the backfield, and Reiner was there. Another injury here for Stevenson. He's the tight end. So two players injured on the last two plays here for Philadelphia. Throwing on third and goal. Taylor lost the football. It scooped up, and here goes. No! Tripped up Lynn Cox at the 27. He was going to score. Second turnover for Philadelphia. We haven't done that yet. I guess we're about to now that I said it. Good play. Good run, Robert Penn. 109. That should be safe from falling under 100 yards. Don't prove me wrong, Madden. I know you could do it if you really wanted to. Seven minutes left to go in the ball game now. Jordan Love wanting to throw this one. Leaping catch by Amari Jones at the 44. Robert Penn getting close to the marker and got a push to get it. First down, Houston. A run game that can actually kill the clock? You kidding me? Robert Penn to the right side. He's taken down after maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage. Robert Penn on third and 10 will get a few more. And it looks like his Texans debut has been a successful one, mostly because of one rush. But he contributed in the passing game. He's had a solid day for what he's been able to control. I'm happy with it. And I'm happy with that field goal. 34-13. Fumble recovered by Isaiah Fletcher. 
All right, let's close this one out. Robert Penn continues. And it looks like this game is all over. Houston defeats Bill O'Brien. And Robert Penn has a successful Texans debut. 34-13, a two-game win streak. Now we split in the episode. We improved to 7-4. and four. Very good chance of getting to double-digit victories this year and winning the division. Jordan Love was really solid today. 275 yards, two touchdowns, and I don't think he threw a single turnover-worthy throw today. He was very good. Robert Penn, a buck 37. 76 of that was after contact. He broke five tackles. That's a lot here in Madden. Jermaine Canavit had five catches, Jones had four, and Penn three for 40. We got to see a couple of those. Mike McGlinchey had a tough day against Stephon Ferris. That's very good to see. Two sacks as well for Jabari Carr. And I don't see any here for Philadelphia. Five games to close out the schedule. We get the eight and three Bengals next time. That might be a game to focus on. Could be a playoff preview, and they're one of the top teams in the NFL. As of right now, we do lead the AFC South with the Jaguars losing this week. It's week 13. We should be able to check on these awards. We can. Right now, Baker Mayfield is first for MVP. Dan Quinn, Coach of the Year. But how about AFC Offensive Rookie of the Year? Nate Wheeler, quarterback of the Patriots. And defensive, Cordell Hillhouse is number one, Alan Beverly number two, just like I thought. But hey, Tevin Tyson's number four. I don't see him catching Beverly or Hillhouse. Right now, Hillhouse is number one. Imagine that. We draft a number two pick, he has a great rookie year, and he still doesn't win rookie of the year because he lost to his own teammate. Here's your stat update. Jordan Love at 19 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, hoping for a strong finish to the year. Here's how things have gone chronologically. Obviously, week 1 was a complete mess. Week 2 and 3, those were better. We've seen some inconsistent play. We've seen some 3 touchdown games as well. But now, things getting a bit more stabilized, perhaps. Looking at his last five games, that would be nine touchdowns to three picks and only sacked twice in that span. And four out of those five games, completion percentage over 61%. For the running game, Robert Penn, 5.3 a carry. I want to see where that ends up by season's end. Amari Jones, 591. Jermaine Candidate, 504. Nobody's on a 1,000 yard receiving pace. I do not think anyone's going to actually get there either. We spread the football around too much, and I think it's going to be even more so with Penn getting carries, and more of them, presumably. Nine and a half sacks for Ferris, seven for Hillhouse, six and a half for Jabari Carr. Very happy with the pass rush and all the turnovers we are forcing. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Next time we take on the Cincinnati Bengals, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave your thoughts down below on the debut of Robert Penn, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Have a great day.